So here's my prologue, right? I'd like you to consider the line with this equation, okay? Now when you first met, like, oh, how many years ago now? When you first met these linear equations, the only way, like you didn't know that three was gonna be the gradient. And you didn't know that negative one was gonna be the y-intercept. You didn't even really have language for that, right? We developed it afterwards. What did you do to graph this thing to know where it was going? Table you used a table of values, and then you used that to plot points. Let's draw up a quick table of values. It won't take long. Let's do, um, let's do three values on there. Three will be enough. So for instance, um, a pretty simple set of values might be like maybe negative 1, 0, and 1. That'll, that'll give us some certainty there. So if I have those x values, let's just quickly mentally compute. This is a very simple function, so we should be able to do this. If x equals negative 1, when you input that, what do you get for y? Minus 4, right? Because you get minus 3, minus 1. When x is 0, you just get minus 1, which is negative 1. And when x equals 1, you've got 3 take away 1, which is 2. Okay, so now I have a phase. You happy with that? And I, I could graph this, okay? I could say that this means minus 1, minus 4 should be on that line, right? This means 1, on that line, and this means 1, 2 should be on that line. Are you okay with that? All right, now this is the way we normally did this. But now I want to reverse this a little bit. I want you to imagine that we hadn't seen this table of values, but do something different. Let me show you. Now this is all I gave you, right? And a lot of this stuff which I just showed you, you, you were not aware of. Like for example, you didn't know this equation, right? And you didn't have this table values which we've, I've only used so that we get these numbers out and you see where they come from, okay? If all you saw were these three lines, okay? You can see they're all in the same format, right? They all follow the same kind of pattern, okay? They're all in this something, some number over here, equals three times another number, take away one. They're all in the same format. We're looking at these three equations, okay? We're looking at these three. Here's what I want us to write down, because this is like the key part of the logic in the proof for this guy, right? Which literally just goes by, and you're like, what, what just happened, okay? So we're going to write it down, right? These equations, right? These equations are all in the same form. They're all in the form. Now, we're going to put some labels on this, right? We already have labels up here, so we might as well reuse them. These equations are all in the form y equals 3x take away 1, right? I put in y and x there because these numbers are changing. They are variable, right? Whereas the 3 and the minus 1, they are constant. So they just, they're always there every single time, right? But not only are they in this, the particular values for x and y, because they're always paired up, right? I can write them in this way. I can say, well, this x and this y are paired up. Right? So the normal way I would pair up an x and y are in writing coordinates. That's how I write this. Right? So these are all in the form uh, y equals 3x minus 1 for uh, negative 1, negative 4, which is this guy, okay? in the form 0, negative 1, which is this guy, and in the form 1, 2, which is this guy. Okay? Yeah? Say that again. X equals to yes. Yeah, it absolutely could be. Uh, and then all of my points would be, yeah, just flipped. That's, that's all it would be. Um, I would then say it'd be minus 4, minus 1, and minus 1, 0, and 2, 1. And you would get the inverse of that. It still satisfies the equation, right? So in some ways, it's just being convenient for me. Okay. So now that I'm saying all these equations are in this form for this set of points, what that means is this is the equation that goes through all of those points. Okay? This is like the converse of saying if these satisfy this, then they're on there. I'm trying to say it in the other direction. right? I'm saying this satisfies all of these. Therefore, this must be the line that passes through all of them. Does that make sense? Do you see that logic? It's a converse. We don't use converses that often, which is why when we pull it out for the quarter, it's a little bit... Hmm, eyebrow raising, okay? So make sure that's written, especially if you just walk back in. How am I going to find the equation of this chord of contact, okay? Well, the first thing that we know is it depends on these tangents, doesn't it? Right? That's why we drew the tangents in. So the first most common sense thing to do is find out the equation of this tangent and the equation of that tangent. 
conveniently, I already know a form that tells me the equations of the tangents right away. Okay? So uh, the first thing I'm going to say is the tangent at A. Right? Because I've named it x1, y1, this is literally exactly the equation of that tangent. Because there's x1 and there's y1. Okay? So I'll just write that down here. There's the equation of the first tangent, right? the left-hand one. The equation of the second tangent will look almost identical. With what difference? Yeah, there will be twos instead of ones, right? It's going to be x, x2, 2a, y plus y2. OK. Now, the other thing I know about these tangents is they're not just random tangents. They both intersect down here at the same point. Actually, that's where they came from, right? That's where we drew them from, right? So if both tangents pass through this point, then this point should satisfy both these equations. Are you satisfied with that? So I should be able to put x0, y0 into both of these, and that should be true state, the true statement. Okay? So since both tangents pass through P, okay, I will rewrite both substituting x0, y0. X not y not. Okay, so it's going to look like this. I've taken both tangents for which I have this convenient form just to straight away spit out the equation of those tangents. I don't, I don't need this form anymore. Okay, I've used it up. I've noticed that both tangents pass through P. That's kind of the point of those tangents, x not y not. So since they pass through there, I can substitute x not y not into both equations and it should be true. Okay? All right, now from this line, this pair of lines, I'm going to rearrange it ever so slightly, ever so slightly, right? Um, I'm going to swap terms here. Watch. I'm going to write it like this. And this. Now, you may well be asking, what was the point of that? Like, it almost looks identical. Just some numbers have shuffled around, OK? And the reason why this is valuable is because this is exactly what we did right here. Do you see this? You remember? I had three equations, and they all had the same format. Okay? They all had these threes in common, and they all had minus ones in common. You see that? Okay? Now, you have a look at this pair of red equations. Look at the pair of red equations. You've got an x in the same spot. You've got a 2a in the same spot. And then you've got a y naught in the same spot. What has changed is this pair of values out the front and this pair of values nestled in here. Okay? That is what has adjusted. Okay? So how could, just like I wrote out y equals 3x minus 1, I wrote that off the basis of these equations. I took three equations in the same format and I fashioned for myself an equation that would generalize those, right? These are three specific examples, but this is the generalization of those three. So I want to do that for here, right? What would that equation look like? Well, I know that these three things I've underlined in green, they should all be the same, right? So I should have an x naught, a something, x naught equals 2a outside of something plus y naught. Now, what goes in those spots? Well, in the first thing, it's whatever x coordinate you want. Right? It's an x coordinate of some variety. So I'm going to write x. That's the variable. It's varying. You can see x1, x2, they change around. What goes in here, it's a y coordinate of some description, right? which also varies. Okay? So I'm going to write y there because it's the y variable. Okay? This here is the equation of the chord of contact. And right now, you should be looking at that and sort of blinking and thinking, deja vu? Just turn back to the first things you wrote this morning. What's the equation for the Cartesian equation, I should say, for a tangent at x1, y1? I mean, I even have it on the board, right? It's x, x1 equals 2a, y plus y1. That's the equation of the tangent. And then you look at the equation of the chord of contact, and it's exactly the same, but with a 0 instead of a 1, because a 0 is off the parabola, and a 1 is on the parabola. Okay? Now, this is crazy. This is weird. Okay?
but we shouldn't be that surprised, right? Remember, again, turn back. I've rubbed it off, so I'm going to have to rewrite it. When we think of it, right, we could say the chord has this equation, right? And when you do those two points that form the chord approach each other converging, in the chord you get a tangent, right? And you get this guy, okay? Well, if this is a chord and you bring x, y, a chord, sure enough, turns into a tangent. The difference is that here you've got two parameters, and the two parameters become identical, right? Whereas here, you've got a point that's off the parabola, and it turns into a point that's on the parabola. That's the only difference there is. Now, if you're like me, right, you're still kind of, mm, I'm not totally sold, okay? You need to see it. So, let me show you.